Take a look at these photos. Massive protests in Hong Kong taken earlier today by former State Department official Christian Whiten. The protests are expected to continue and grow throughout the whole weekend. Now, there was speculation earlier today that China was planning to declare martial law this Sunday as the government faces resistance from within. The foreign minister is now denying this. Christian Whiten joins us now by the phone from Hong Kong. So, Christian, what are you hearing about this rumor of martial law? Well, David, there is concern among those in the know that Beijing is not going to let what's happening here slide. Uh, that's not actually deterring any of the protesters. I think they realize this is an absolutely essential thing for them to do. It's sort of the uh, a last chance, a last stand, uh, one that you can't come back from. But as for an actual sort of move toward martial law and an invasion by the People's Liberation Army, I think that's viewed as a little more remote. What the concern is is a, a sort of hybrid invasion, if you will, of the Public Security Bureau of civilian police who then round up several hundred of the, uh, of the more active protesters and organizers, and that would have the same chilling effect. Not a certainty. That would be very high risk for Beijing, but a possibility. Yeah. So, Christian, uh, the governor, the Hong Kong government removed, yanked the extradition treaty, right? And that was the, the initial spark for these protests. What exactly is the end game now? I mean, it, obviously, China is not going to either invade Hong Kong or renounce Hong Kong. Uh, they obviously want some more protections, I guess, codified that had been in place. But isn't this starting to be a little like the gilet, the, the gilet jaune, the, the protests in France? It's like protesting without a clear sense of what outcome could be. Right, Zach. It's interesting. It's a new, um, a new, a new collection of leaders. It's still forming. Some of the demands are varying. So, uh, you know, there's a demand that even though the extradition treaty has been pushed to the side, that it be formally withdrawn and killed off. There are others who want the chief executive to resign for her role in what's going on. There are questions about what the police have done. Um, there are demands that that some of the protest leaders who are uh, in jail, along with some very ordinary citizens, airline pilots included, um, for example, should be let out of prison. I think it more in aggregate this will go in the direction that Beijing needs to fulfill the promises it's broken, which included universal suffrage, the popular election of a chief executive, essentially real democracy in Hong Kong instead of the half democracy, uh, and also a restoration of the autonomy that Beijing promised to Hong Kong in the handover from Britain to uh, China. Christian, Jonas Ferris, is it possible any of this has anything to do with the trade war in the sense that China's now been kind of pushed into a corner that they're not allowed to be the China they were of the last 20 or 30 years? And is it, is it, is it are, the, are they overreacting China because of that pressure from us, or are the people more inclined to protest because they feel like now we can get China to change their behaviors, or is, there, or is it completely unrelated? Jonas, I think that implication is absolutely right, that it's related, that Xi Jinping's power has been diminished as he's botched the trade war. He's failed to realize the power of the U.S. economy, the strong hand that Donald Trump in the U.S. has. You know, Xi Jinping, the Chinese leader, essentially crowned himself emperor at the 2017 Party Congress. That was supposed to lead to some new great level for China. It's been downhill since then. The economy is lazy. He has botched the trade war. Um, and this in Hong Kong is further diminishing his power. I think it's, it's good for the United States. Uh, there's a tendency to view these two things as separate, but I think it all comes together. Yeah, I was reading some of those, uh, Christian, let's say, connecting the dots kind of pieces, but I'm just curious. I mean, if civil servants strike on Monday as they are threatening to do, is the government going to clamp down? I mean, are they going to fire people? Are they going to seek retribution? Are you hearing anything along those lines? That threat, Deirdre, was actually what prompted, I think, the genesis of, of tonight's um, protest, which were civil servants getting together, being very upset that they were told they must shut up. Um, and that's remarkable. These are risk-averse people. These aren't really young students who are, who are, you know, more aggressive. And then they were joined by tens of thousands of ordinary Hong Kong citizens. Also, the, repu the word is that um, there's going to be a protest today in Kowloon, just across the, uh, the harbor here from Central, uh, that will be probably large. But even bankers are joining into these protests. And for a city that supposedly had no soul in a way and was focused just on making money, this sort of outpouring, I think the, the government is going to be very hesitant. It, it has to, um, you know, is not sure-footed because it had to back down once, and it doesn't want to sort of stick its, its deck out and have to do that again. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, it'll be very interesting to see how it develops. A lot of passion in these protests. Christian Whiten, a fascinating time to be there. Stay in touch. We'd like to hear your updates. I appreciate it.